Just could be out, locks his brakes off, and he goes one hits the Ferrari Sebastian Vettel with the Ferrari suffering front wing damage. And Nico Hulkenberg has also lost his front wing thanks to that slowing Ferrari. And this is going to help us massively. There they are, just out of us. We're in 14th position. We are going to make a huge amount of positions, and we have just made seven positions in two corners. We may have lost out to our teammate as he has finished in fifth position, but we are going to cross the line in an exceptional eighth place, moving up two places from where we started. Hey, what's up? It is Dan or DMAD96 here, and welcome to episode two of our F1 2016 career mode with Haas F1. And currently on the screen right now, we are speaking to R&D Chris and he is informing us about the latest updates of the car that we researched into at the previous round in Australia. That, of course, being the engine upgrade. It's not a big upgrade, of course, because it's only the first one, but at a track like Bahrain, this should give us a small boost in straight line speed. And obviously Bahrain has the two long DRS straights as well as the straight before the final corner. And we're not the only team making upgrades. Salva and Toros have also bought some upgrades this weekend. As you can see on the right hand side of the screen right now, we have moved ahead of Force India and McLaren in the development race. And we are now the sixth best team just sitting behind Toro Rosso. As we move on to the first practice session for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Should be an interesting race this weekend. Obviously we scored points last time out in Australia. That will be our aim again this weekend and for this season to be honest. To so try and stay consistently in the points. And also, uh, it, it will be good if we can beat our teammate Romain Grosjean as he took a brilliant fifth in Australia and we can't really lose uh, anything to him really because we have a rivalry of him right now. Even though we are already winning, it will be good if we can keep ahead of him in the race. As you can see on the screen right now, we are currently doing the track acclimatisation programme. It wasn't the best of first laps, but we still beat our first target score and come around the final corner to complete the second lap and we do just about beat that by 10 points. And that is the track acclimatization program. We did complete the other two tests, but I'm not including them in this video. But we did get a perfect ranking on those two tests as well. So we now have 218 resource points, which takes our current total up to 624. And we use those resource points to upgrade the downforce for the car. As we're coming to a few tracks like China, Russia, Spain and Monaco, where it's going to rely on cornering speed. So it would be good if we can get our upgrades uh, very soon. But now, with the upgrade being prepared for the next race, it's time to move on to the qualifying report. Lewis Hamilton set the early pace in Q1 from the two Ferrari drivers. Rio Harianto got the better of teammate Pascal Verlein once again, as both manners were eliminated along with the Saubers and the Renault. Red Bull set the pace in Q2 with Daniel Ricciardo fastest ahead of Sebastian Vettel as both Mercedes drivers set their times on the yellow wall soft tyres. Haas rookie Dan Phillips impresses making it into Q3 once again, while Fernando Alonso made the top 10 at the expense of both Toro Rosso's. I think we are progressing uh, well. Uh, definitely we are moving in the right direction. All the, all the updates in the car uh, keep uh, making us more and more competitive. So still a long way to go because uh, we are far from pole position, but uh, uh, it's the first step. And uh, now let's, let's concentrate on tomorrow, uh, capitalize those, those positions and uh, be in the points. But in Q3, it was Nico Rosberg who will take pole position this weekend, whilst Lewis Hamilton struggled to fifth. What was the difference out there in qualifying? Um, it's a fine line between being on it and not being on it, and today was just not one of those days. I don't, uh, don't have an answer for it, but, you know, I'll try and make up for it tomorrow. Both Ferraris line up behind the pole sitter as Dan Phillips goes one better than his qualifying performance in Australia to take ninth. So after all of that, it's Nico Rosberg on pole position for this weekend's Grand Prix alongside fellow countryman Sebastian Vettel, with Kimi Raikkonen and Daniel Ricciardo completing the top four. Lewis Hamilton has all the work to do from 5th on the grid, with Max Verstappen splitting the two Williams drivers in 7th. Haas rookie Dan Phillips impresses against 9th, out qualifying the two Toro Rossos. His teammate Romain Grosjean sits 13th, ahead of both Force Indias and McLaren's Jensen Button. And finally, the two Renaults, Saubers and Manners occupy the final three rows, with Rhea Harianto out qualifying Pascal Verlein for this weekend's Bahrain Grand Prix. It's race day here in Bahrain. And we are starting in ninth position inside the top 10 once again. Another good qualifying session and aiming for some more points this weekend and hoping to be our teammate Romain Grosjean who starts down in 13th. And even though we are ahead of him in the drive for rivalry, I would still like to try and beat our teammate as much as we can. Australia seem to be all about the strategy and as we can tell, my strategy skills aren't that great and Romain Grosjean just pulled off a much better job about one stop strategy compared to our two stop and that's how he came out ahead of us. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, 
We had a recap of the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, who won the last race, is ahead of his teammate Nico Rosberg, who starts in pole position. And we're sitting there decent third as we get off for the formation lap. And I don't think we're going to stay in that third position for much longer because Williams and Ferrari are certainly going to catch up with us uh, in the coming few races as we are underway for the formation lap. We're not really going to show the entire thing off because we've already seen this before. So we're going to cut straight to the start of the race and the five lights are about to illuminate for round number two of the Formula 1 season and we are underway here in Bahrain. It's a good start for the front man as Lewis Hamilton getting off to a solid start from fifth position and we are side by side with Fernando Alonso going straight down towards turn one. I think one of the Ferraris was trying to make a challenge for the lead. We're forced out wide slightly alongside Max Verstappen going in towards turn two and we've got the two Williams drivers and Daniel Ricciardo just ahead of us and we're going to get past Valtteri Bottas who is on the slower tyres and we're going to try and also get past Massa and Ricardo and Lewis Hamilton at the same time. A very dive bomb S manoeuvre there. But we are up into fourth position. A decent start from us. And we're ahead of the soft runner Lewis Hamilton. And, and yeah, I've, I've got to remember that he did qualify on the soft tyres in Q2 as we just start the second lap now. And there is a battle for the lead here between uh, Vettel, Raikkonen and Rosberg. And they are slowing each other down. We're right on the back of a Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel. He is going so slowly. Surely we're going to have to make a move around the outside and we have done and believe it or not we are in third position in the opening few laps and the AI tend to be very slow in the early part of this race and seem to pick up the pace by the end of it. That seems to be a recurring thing that happens in all the F1 games as we just start the third lap we have set the fast lap of the race and we can see a battle emerging between Kimi Raikkonen and Nico Rosberg going down towards turn one. Rosberg trying to be defensive, Raikkonen has the inside line and I've I think Kimi Raikkonen is about to take the lead of the Bahrain Grand Prix and he has done I think he has got ahead of Nico Rosberg we are waiting behind with Sebastian Vettel right behind us and surprisingly he is not really making a move I have no idea why but we are now right up behind Nico Rosberg and Kimi Raikkonen and we could potentially take second position here uh, just to let you know this is still on Legend AI I have not moved it up to Ultimate AI just yet as we go around the final corner and surely we're going to get DRS on Nico Rosberg and let's not forget as you can see on the top left hand corner of the screen he is on the soft tyres he has got DRS wide open but somehow we have got superior straight line speed and we are up into second position Raikkonen is on the softs as well I don't know how we're so quick at the start of the race but we are up to second position taking a look at a replay now just going straight past Nico Rosberg and it's, it's very very strange to see us up in second position but now we are in second behind Kimi Raikkonen I doubt we're going to catch him up though we just passed Nico Rosberg so anything can happen but Rosberg is right behind us going into this tricky left hander a corner I've been struggling with all weekend we don't run wide but that was a horrible corner cut there going down into the left hander and we are still have Nico Rosberg he has for DRS and I can only apologize for that awful corner cut manoeuvre we are in second position currently, still ahead of Nico Rosberg despite the fact that he is in a Mercedes. But it should all change in the pit stops which I believe is at the end of this lap and here we are going into the pits. The two Mercedes drivers staying out as they are on the soft tyre so they will want to make an extra long stint. As we go towards the end of the pit lane now you can see a load of other cars coming down the pit straight. I doubt we're going to rejoin anywhere high at the field as we enter our pit box. We will be going onto the soft set of tyres and we are going to aim to do a two stop this weekend and try and see if we can get some more decent points and beat our teammates so we're going to rejoin the race in a 17th position behind Sebastian Vettel who has already made his pit stop so it seems like he has actually jumped us as you as you remember we were ahead of Vettel and now we have actually uh, lost out Sebastian now now moving on further into the lap we've got the Williams of Felipe Massa right ahead of us and he is on the medium tyres with slower compound tyres but let's not forget that Williams is quite quick in a straight line. We've also got Daniel Ricciardo in the ever so quick Red Bull behind us. So as we make a move at the inside of Felipe Massa moving up to 17th position. But let's not forget that there's still a lot of drivers that have to make their pit stops. As we move on to lap 8. A couple of the drivers coming into the pits. One of them, interestingly, being Lewis Hamilton. And surely we're not going to rejoin ahead of him. And we just about have rejoined ahead of Lewis Hamilton. And he's got Felipe Massa behind him as well. But surely he'll probably fend them off. We are now into 12th position ahead of Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes. Still behind Sebastian Vettel who is way up the road. But I believe he is battling with the two manners. I think he's cleared them now as we move on to the end of lap 8. 
We are now catching up to the manor of Pascal Verlein and surely we should overtake him. I believe he hasn't made his pit stop yet. A few of the drivers going to the pits. We are up to 8th position but it's going to be ninth as Lewis Hamilton tries to make a move down the inside. But that is Nico Rosberg as well taking a very wide line. Rosberg has just about got ahead of us but those manners are going to make it very hard for the two Mercedes drivers to try and uh, uh, get away from us here. And you can see how slowly Pascal Verlein is going into this penultimate corner. Lewis Hamilton getting alongside us as well in the ever so quick Mercedes. Sergio Perez is out in front surprisingly. And as Rosberg makes his move on Pascal Verlein, Hamilton goes down the inside. We're going to try and defend around the outside. But no, we just stay ahead of the current champion. And now going on to the straight to try and get past the manner of Pascal Verlein. It shouldn't really be too hard as he is in the manner of course. And we get ahead of a manor driver. Rosberg now on uh, Verline's teammate, Harry Anto, going down towards turn one. He can't really get past him for some reason, as we just stay ahead of uh, Lewis Hamilton, who's also made the move on the manor driver, Pascal Verline. And this is going to be an entertaining battle, as Lewis Hamilton is trying to make a move, going down to the inside of turn four, I do believe. Rosberg, I think, has passed Harry Anto. Hamilton makes the move down the inside. We're trying to hold on side by side into this tricky sector two here. And we go slightly wide. Lewis Hamilton forces out wide. We'd also lost the position to Verline. And that is a disaster down into ninth position. We're going to go straight back the inside of Verline. And Hamilton has managed to overtake us. And I think now we're going to have to say goodbye to the two Mercedes drivers. As they have just passed Rio Harrianto. And I believe we're going to go up the inside of him very, very shortly. And I don't think really he should put much of a threat. Because he is in a manner. Uh, one of the slowest cars on the grid. And there we are going straight down the side of Harry Anto and taking that 7th position. Kimi Raikkonen, meanwhile, the race leader, still setting the fastest lap of the race. I don't think we're going to catch back up to the two Mercedes drivers now as we're entering the uh, middle stage of the race. But now, moving on board with Nico Rosberg, and that is smoke from the back of that Mercedes. He's on fire, and he is pulling off to one side, and a shame for Rosberg who had a good result in Australia, second place, and is going to lose out massively to his teammate in the championship with a retirement here, and that is going to bring out the virtual safety car for the second consecutive race, and obviously we've got to uh, stay to the uh, current speed limits, and I don't believe it's going to be out for uh, that long, I think it's just to the end of the straight as we move on to the next lap, and we are now in racing conditions, up into fifth position behind Lewis Hamilton, but we have Daniel Ricciardo to deal with on those medium tyres, and let's not forget that Red Bull is a very quick car, much quicker than our Haas. But now moving on to the next lap, lap 13. And as you can see, we are now up to fourth position. And that is because Sergio Perez has made a very interesting pit stop for super soft tyres. And surely he is going to get past us on this straight. We are going to have no chance defending off this very fast force in as he moves back into fourth position. And it seems like Sergio Perez is having a very good race today. We do try to defend around the outside, but we just gave up at the end and let the forcing driver have that position. Now moving on to the end of lap 15, and we're going to be going into the pit lane uh, for our second stop. And I can tell you now that this was a small mistake from me. I said at the start of the video that the strategy making isn't really my best call, and we're going to come into the pits now, and we are going to make our second stop. But interestingly, for the soft tyres, and I don't really know what I was thinking. I was hoping we could try and make it to the end of the race on two sets of softs, but it just wasn't going to happen. There was no way that we were going to do 13 laps on the soft tyres. And this comes back to uh, haunt me later on in the race. I will tell you that now. But we are on the soft tyres in 17th position. We're going to try a very interesting strategy uh, approach ahead of Felipe Massa behind the Renault of Kevin Magnussen. And we have caught back up to him now on lap 17. And there is a big train here which involves... Uh, Danny Kvyat, uh, Felipe Nasa, Marcus Ericsson, and interestingly Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari. So it seems like something has gone wrong for the Ferrari driver there as we now go up the inside of Felipe Nasa, catch up to the back of Marcus Ericsson and Danny Kvyat going down towards the final corner. And we must have now quicker speed on those fresher tyres. Ericsson trying to make a move on Kvyat and we are going to try and go up the inside of both. No, we're not. We just back off because we don't want to cause a big accident. But we get up the inside of Danny Kvyat and now... We are going to have a better straight line speed and the DRS wide open for Marcus Ericsson going down the start finish straight and we have got ahead of the Sauber driver back into 11th position on lap 18 of the Grand Prix. And there is Sebastian Vettel just ahead of us who is on the medium tyre so I think he is going to, uh, to the end of the race on those set of tyres. Now on to lap 19 there is Daniel Ricciardo just exiting the pits on a set of soft tyres and there is Sergio Perez who is also on the soft tyres so he's pitted as well back into 8th position here and... As you can see now, 
this is where my strategy sort of came back to bite me back in the arse. As I had to pit again, there was no way that we could do 13 laps on a set of soft tyres. And I can only apologise for the uh, awful strategy decision that I made. And we had to pit for a set of super soft tyres though. But this advantage would, would mean that I'll be on a, a much faster set of tyres. And hopefully I'll catch up to get some decent points hopefully in the end. As we move on to lap 22, we've got a train featuring a, a lapped Jensen Button, Fernando Alonso and Rio Harrianta who is still somehow in 13th position. As we are right on the back of Fernando Alonso and we should get ahead of him and Rio Harrianta anytime soon now. There we are passing Alonso and going down the inside of Harrianta into the final corner and up into 13th position we go. Now next up is Carlos Sainz in the Toro Rosso and surely we should be catching up to him as another car goes into the pits. That is Pascal Verlein in the manor. Only a few laps to go now and Romain Grosjean is just up the road so we make a very rash move down the inside of Carlos Sainz into the tough left-hander onto the DRS road. We get DRS as well but unfortunately as you can see Nico Hulkenberg as you can see in the top left-hand corner in a minute is on the super soft tyres and I think... They're a much fresher uh, set of superstar tyres compared to what we've got. We have moved into ninth position uh, at the expense of Max Verstappen going to the pits, but at the end it just really wasn't enough, and it was another poor strategy decision for me, and I can only apologise for that. And unfortunately we, get, we are going to finish in the points, which is very good, but unfortunately it's going to be behind our teammate as we move on to the race winner, and that is Kimi Raikkonen, who has done a fantastic job here in Bahrain to take a fantastic victory. His first win of the season, of course, and uh, it will be interesting for the championship if he can actually challenge with the Mercedes drivers. But we come across the line. It may not be ahead of our teammate once again, and it is a slightly disappointing result, but it's still two points, and that isn't bad. And I'm somewhat annoyed with that because I felt like we could have done a lot better, but at the same time, at least it is some points. And as you can see, Maurizio Uwe Bene and the Ferrari team celebrating as Kimi Raikkonen takes a fantastic victory under the floodlights here at the Bahrain International Circuit. And then I saw this on the podium. As you can see, uh, Lewis Hamilton takes second, but Daniel Ricciardo was in third position and we were battling with him uh, before our final pit stop. And if I made the strategy call to go to mediums instead of the softs, I could have probably gone to the end of the race and maybe get a decent top five finish so that's where I did get very annoyed with that and it is a shame we could have had a top five finish if it wasn't for my terrible strategy mistake but at the end of the day we still got some decent points a decent ninth place finish Roman Grosjean did beat us yet again but we did out qualify him in qualifying and we set the quicker lap so I think the driver rivalry is going to be very interesting but it's a race win for Kimi Raikkonen and more important points for the championship. Uh, shame for Nico Rosberg who didn't finish as well. So Lewis Hamilton has extended his lead and Rosberg falls to third in the standings. Kimi Raikkonen moving up second, 12 points off Lewis Hamilton. We moved down to 11th behind Sergio Perez and Grosjean up to fourth after some terrific points finishes that he has had this weekend. And as we move on to the Constructors' Championship, we didn't really get much of that, but we have now dropped down from third to fourth and Ferrari have moved ahead of both us and Red Bull in second thanks to Kimi Raikkonen's victory. But now a quick rivalry update with our teammate and as you can see we did get more ticks than him over the course of the weekend 5-4 to four, and we still lead our rivalry and can potentially wrap that up at the next round in China. But anyway I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If you have please leave a like, comment down below and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Until next time guys it's been DMAT96 catch you guys later. Cracky.